often when we try to dive into the scripture of the day, um, we often presume or have to presume that, that, that certain ideas or certain uh, words are already clear or already, already well defined. Otherwise, like every time you mention a sentence, all the words in that sentence have to be clarified and then you end up finding yourself just on a million tangents. So after yesterday's homily, I mentioned conversion uh, a couple of times, you know, turning back to the Lord. And we didn't really go into it very much because that would have been a whole other theme, which I think we can cover today, conversion. Uh, so the idea of conversion. Uh, we've mentioned before that generally speaking, the older we get, the less we like to change. The older we get, the less we like to change. We like to have the cup of tea just the way it's supposed to be made, in my favourite cup and saucer, and with the two spoon slightly to the right. You know, we, we start to get a little pernickety about how things are set up and where things have to be, and you know everything just like this is this is my system, right? Uh, so everything has to be done that way, and the. The more we get on in years, the more we get used to things being that way. I have a, a rhythm for my day, maybe back before COVID, you know, you get up and you'd go to daily mass, and then you might meet someone after mass and spend no more than 10 minutes uh, having a little chat there in front of the church, and then head down, get a few messages, and go home and start preparing dinner, whatever it was. You, know, you have a, a kind of a, a rhythm, a program to, to, to the day. And even if the program is somewhat more lax, you know, I spend all day in front of the TV, it's still, it's still a, a chosen program, if you will. So conversion implies change. That's like that, 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 just has to be, that just has to be laid out there. You know? Conversion implies change. It implies changing direction. So there's no such thing as conversion, but everything in your life staying the same. It just, it, 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 you, you, can't, you can't have both. Conversion means changing direction, so it means change. So you can't, we can't keep doing what we're doing and convert at the same time. It's just, it's like a contradiction in terms, okay? So changing direction, obviously it doesn't mean changing absolutely everything in our lives, but the, the things in our lives that, that uh, either are outright wrong or look good but are done for the wrong reasons. So in our readings today, we have Isaiah talking to the rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah, calling them to convert, right? So to leave their immoral life. So they're doing something that's just outright wrong. That needs to change. Okay, then you've, you've Jesus then in the gospel who's speaking about the scribes and Pharisees who are doing things that are exteriorly good, but for the wrong reasons, the wrong intention, the wrong heart. Okay, so they're like these scribes and Pharisees, you know, that, that, the wonderful parable that the Lord tells where there's a, scri a Pharisee at the front of the synagogue and he says, Lord, thank you that, you know, he said, Lord God, I, I, I tithe and I pray and I fast and all of these wonderful things, and thank you that you have not made me like that's this tax collector at the back of the synagogue, the tax collector, so therefore a guy working for a, an occupational fo a, a force, a foreign force that's just taken over their country, stealing from his own people, giving the money to, to the Romans, you know, despised by his own people, uh, doesn't fast, doesn't pray, doesn't tithe, right? Uh, is in the, the synagogue, beats his chest, and says, oh Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he goes home reconciled with God, not the Pharisee who does all these wonderful things, but for the wrong reason, for the wrong intention, right? So we can't fool God either, which is important to know that it's, it's the heart that matters. It really is now, and of course the heart will lead to good actions. So it's not that actions don't matter. Of course they do. But everything stems from, from what's inside a man. Okay, so conversion, then uh, leaving habits, or hobbies that are outright sinful, right? And also watching the reason we do even things that look good. Am I doing it to be thanked? Am I doing it to be seen? Am I doing it to be noticed? Am I doing it for me? Okay, and this, 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 this can happen very, very easily. You know, you do something good for someone. Uh, there was a a priest friend of mine, and um, he really suffered. He was, he was, he used to all act, he used to act all hard, you know. Uh, he was, uh, he was from America, is from America. And um, before he, he entered religious life, he was into the whole gym scene, and he held on a bit, There's no, no, no problem with that. He held on to a bit of that into his priesthood, so he was a small guy, so he liked to look a little more buff. 
Uh, and um, but behind it all, it was a really, really sensitive heart, you know. So whenever he'd, he'd help someone, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of a few details. I remember he put on a, a celebration, like, for his local community, his, his religious community. And so he cooked and baked and prepared the whole thing, right? And, um, you know, so brother number one, brother number two, brother number three thanked him and said, thank you so much, that was absolutely amazing. But brother four kind of thought that, well, the thanks has already been said by brother one, two, and three, so, you know, it's kind of presumed that, that, that I'm grateful as well. But then he, all he would see was, he didn't thank me. All of that effort, and he didn't thank me. Didn't even care. Wouldn't even open his mouth and say two words, thank you. How hard is that? And the whole day would be ruined for him. You know, because like just deep down, like just a, a very, very sensitive heart, but maybe just, dare I say, a little too attentive to, to being recognized or being thanked for what he did. And it made his life miserable. Made his life, religious life, absolutely miserable. Because, you know, not everyone is going to see what you do or thank you. Thank God. You know, we can do things just simply for the glory of God in the story. So... Okay, so these two aspects of conversion, giving up what's outright wrong and sinful, but also watching the good things that we do, that we do them for the right reasons. And a, a great way of testing that is if no one thanks me, will I be happy anyway? If no one sees this, you know, do you ever do something good and kind of want to get caught? You know, oh, here I am, cleaning the floor while everyone else is watching a movie. But enjoy the movie, lads, enjoy the movie. Just cleaning the floor here. Just anyone else walking past? <laughs> to make sure that they will see. Oh, there's someone in the kitchen. Yes, I'm just cleaning the floor, you know, while everyone else enjoys themselves. And just making sure you get caught doing something good, you know? Uh, so this kind of thing. But we want to be seen doing the good thing as well. Get caught doing the good thing so that we'll be thanked, that we'll be recognized, that we'll be thought. Jenny, they're, they're very holy, they're very prayerful. You know, when you're up in the chapel, the door is slightly open. You kind of position yourself just so you, you can be seen by those who walk past. <laughs> you know, all this kind of thing. Just like, just that you'll be seen, all right? So this desire to, yes, pray or yes, serve, but also to be recognized or thanked for it as well, you know, to get something from it. So the purification of our intention. In all of this, how do we, how do we navigate our way through this? Because it's a bit of a minefield, you know? Even trying to understand our own hearts and our own motivations, it's not exactly straightforward. At times, we, we do good things and don't even recognize that we're, we're really doing it because we want to be seen or thanked or recognized. So how do we navigate our way through this? At the end of our gospel today, we have the words of Jesus. The greatest among you must be your servant. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. I think as, as Catholics, one of our great guides in this, this conversion, this turning back to God, is Our Lady. The humility of Our Lady. The service of Our Lady. You know, Our Lady is, 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 is greeted so uh, elatedly by... Uh, by her cousin Elizabeth, you know, who am I to be visited by the mother of my Lord? And her answer is, my soul magnifies the Lord. You know, it's, all the praise immediately goes to God. It's not, it's not about me, even though she was pretty amazing, you know? She's like the, the new Eve, where, 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 Eve falls, where Eve falls into disobedience, and lady answers yes in obedience, where, where Eve doubts God, God's goodness, Our Lady trusts and believes in his goodness. So she's, she, she, she's, she's so, so, such an amazing person and yet so humble, and this is her greatness, her humility. So in this, this, this effort to convert, rather than just doing it ourselves and going at it alone, in this Lent we can ask Our Lady in a particular way, guide my heart. Guide my heart, guide my intentions, guide, you know, we should have time, especially with COVID now with lockdown and that, we should have a little more time for a little bit of self-reflection, you know, when we're praying. So not, not just kind of get the prayer done, but in, in the prayer, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to change? I know we're a bit into Lent at this point, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter even if we start a new resolution now. 
what does the Lord want to heal? What does he want to heal in you? What does he want to set you free of? Our blessed lady then, our, our, our queen and our mother, I mean, she will take us by the hand and guide us through these days because she wants nothing more than to lead us to the heart of her son. So we ask, we ask our blessed lady in all humility to lead us and to guide us amidst our confused and confusing minds, our, our busy world, uh, our busy uh, brains that are so full of, of headlines and, and news tidbits and uh, all of the COVID stories and everything, there's so much going on, just to kind of to put all that aside for a second and just listen to our mom who is guiding us to Jesus. May we give her permission to take the reins and may she guide us to the heart of our son, the fulfillment of our every desire. Amen.